everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the YouTube series where I reveal what's inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello and welcome to part 35. Now this mold is a little bit obvious this week. It is round and flat and generally that means it's a piece of dinnerware like a bowl or a plate. So it doesn't have much expectation for anything sort of quirky or groovy but I think what I'll do with this one is um, make it quirky and groovy in my own way so pouring it up and gently letting the excess come out and then when it's ready to pull out I gently carve into the clay without touching the plaster so just giving it sort of a groove and a memory so that I can then pull away that excess and pull the plate out really gently without warping it as I do so so that's what I'm doing there I add a rubber kidney around the outside and scrape away that excess as well um, so I'm being very gentle because the plaster molds are actually really really soft and you don't want to carve into them um, because that can cause damage down the track so it, opening it up <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself but opening it up to reveal a really gorgeous simple plate it doesn't have any embellishment it's just a nice little serving plate um, it's bigger than a saucer it's not as big as a dinner plate so I was kind of thinking it looks a lot like a dessert plate and you'll see what I do with that in just a second so here is the mold before I poured it it was so dirty and dusty um, another one that I had to really clean up um, before I put all that clay inside because yeah you just don't want that because it can cause lumps and bumps and especially if you want a really clean flat plate you don't want to have some dirt sit into the clay and then it burn out and cause all these little crevices I mean you might want to do like a moon plate or something like that but not for me this time so I go in and I cut away that foot um, so the pouring spout so that it's nice and flat so it will sit on the table really nicely and evenly because you don't want your plate wobbling around on the table as you eat from it. So I begin wedging some clay because I've decided I'm going to do some hand building and I'm going to make this a little dessert plate with sculpted macarons. I'm not saying that right probably because of my accent, I don't know, um, but I'm going to make some little macarons out of clay. So here I've got a little cookie cutter type um, tool um, I've got a whole set of these and I'm sort of just thinking about where I'm going to place the macarons so I know how many I should be making so with my wedged clay I begin just prepping it and most of the video is of me sculpting these and then painting them so with the macarons the way I made them is I used a cookie cutter and I cut out I rolled out some clay and then I cut out these sort of macaron shapes I then went back to these macaron shapes and cut them in half um, because they were actually quite thick what I was going to do is put the two um, two things that I'd cut out together but I ended up cutting just one in half um, because I thought that that would be big enough so once I had cut it in half I then got a thinner strip of clay and I rolled it I rolled it out a lot thinner I got a slightly smaller cookie cutter and cut out another circle and that became the filling so once I had the filling and then all the size of the macarons I began assembling them all I mean there could have been an easier way I tried a couple before this but this sort of just felt the most uh, the best for my hands and the way I work um, and I really enjoyed this process so I'm cutting out the filling and I use my yellow sponge is sort of like a um, like a support so I'm not like pushing down on the macaron and flatting that really nice curved edge I've worked on um, so the sponge just stops 
I guess reshaping it whilst I'm working with it and then I use a wire tool brush and carve up each size side where I'm going to join and then add some slip to make it like a glue so I ended up making about <laughs> I think 20 macarons out of clay um, I swear making the real deal would have been quicker <laughs> but they took a fair amount of time um, because I made two plates the reason for that was I I'm going to test something on these um, but the how do I word this the test was fine um, it was the backup plate that I stuffed up and I forgot to sponge down the base because I got ahead of myself and just carved all the macarons and sculpted them on there and I forgot to smooth down the base of the plate so I put it through the biscuit fire and realized that it had all these jagged edges that I now have to figure out how to sand back because I forgot to fix it up before I put it in the kiln so that that's something that I'm just going to look into. I didn't show it in this video, but um, 10 of the macarons that I sculpted went onto the other plate. Um, and yeah, we, <laughs> we ended up without that plate, but one of them was enough. So this week I reached out to a local Ballarat baker mrs brown bakes and i've worked out a cute little sort of like collab with her um to get some beautiful macarons to display on this plate for the reveal so you'll see that in just a jiffy um i used all this beautiful pastel colors and sort of based it off her work um so i'm really excited i'm really really excited for this because it's um a really different to what i usually do i feel like i say that every week but i just thought i wanted to challenge myself by um instead of doing a frankenstein mold and mold so like using two molds and joining them together i thought how cool would it be if i did a mold and then sculpted something myself with my own hands and sort of jazzed this plate up with something that i had done um whilst also challenging my hand building skills my joining skills um because some of these macarons are on weird peculiar angles um i just want to see how good i could get my joins happenings and i was actually left pretty impressed with my work um by the end of it but i'll let you enjoy some of my sculpting um i pretty much from here once i add them all i sponge it down just to get rid of some of the excess then i go in with a little fine brush um when it's dried out a bit more to just sort of smooth over the join areas and sort of use some of that dry clay to fill in some of the um the joins as well so just enjoy and i'll tune back in when it's time to paint
all sculpted it is ready to paint and I saved some of Mrs Brown Bakes macaron photos so that I had a color palette to work with so I kind of color matched them to the photos on her Instagram and just began mixing I guess like a palette really um, one thing that I did do was that with the macaron plate I ended up bisque firing it because it was so heavy on one side because of all the macarons I had sculpted it onto it um, and I wanted to make sure that it was nice and sturdy for me to paint so when you bisque fire it gives it a bit more of a structural integrity so there's less chance of you sort of breaking it or knocking it or um, taking a gouge out of it and it just makes it a lot easier to paint because I sort of realized with this I thought it was going to be sort of like a almost like an easier paint project but with all the macarons sculpted did in different ways and because I was going to paint them all different colors it was actually really tricky to paint and get into all those little crevices and nooks and um, getting under the macarons I didn't quite get under all of them um, it was so tricky and I was thinking when I was painting them that it would have even been cool to stain some clay so add some uh, stained colors into the clay wedge them in and color the clay and then sculpt the macarons out of the the colored clay and then sculpt them on because then I wouldn't have had to sort of like paint them and get into all those nooks um it would have already been colored and yeah but that's just something I think when you like make stuff you go oh what's an easier way I could have done this or what's another technique I could have used to do this and that's something that I probably would do next time if I did something like a project like this one um but yeah, so I bisque fired them and the other reason I did that, um, just going back to that point, was because with plates, because they are flat, they are a bit precarious precarious in the kiln um, and they can warp um, depending on where you put them in there uh, in the kiln so um, warping just sort of uh, instead of it being flat it kind of looks like a bit of a wave um, and like it's not ideal I mean if you're going for that aesthetic then it's fine um, but it's not ideal for plates especially if you want to serve things on them um, you don't want your sauce like running and moving around your plate um, so so with the weight of the macarons on the side, I was so nervous that it was going to warp. So that was another reason why I did a spare plate because I thought maybe I could weight it down with something and put it on top of it so that it doesn't warp in the kiln. And I was just thinking, forward thinking um, to, I guess, like predict if something happened, I could have a backup plate to, to work with and have a finished result with that I was impressed with. But I got this out of the bisque kiln and it didn't warp and I was really happy. I was really stoked. I mean, it could still warp in the glaze frying, but um, because I'm doing the voiceover after, I can confirm it did not warp. So I was really happy with that. Um, it's also might be to do with my kiln because my kiln is a real little baby. Um, the heat... Um, the way it heats up is very, very even because it's so small. When you have a larger kiln, um, your heat doesn't, I guess, like do it heat as evenly because you've got your heat that moves around the kiln in different ways. Um, so you can get warping in like a sort of larger kiln. So that's why I'm lucky that I don't have much space in my kiln um, is that I don't get warping in plates or I haven't yet. Um, so I go in and I'm painting the colors on the plate I'm adding lots of pigments um, I didn't have enough to do another bisque fire this week so I ended up just glazing straight onto this now I usually bake the paint on um, I talk about this in like literally every YouTube and I was just like you know what we're just gonna try it and see how it comes out see how the colors move um, and see what it looks like so with this macaron plate I really wanted the macarons to not be super glossy so I use a lot of clear gloss glaze and I didn't want it to be super glossy I wanted it to kind of have a sheen to it but not be like really yet yeah, glass like so what I decided to do was I glazed the base of the plate and because there were all those sort of crevices in between the macarons, I put the glaze through so that it would glaze up where they had sort of joined. So it sort of gave it a bit more structure. Um, and then I went around anywhere I missed on the plate with a 
brush. Um, so just brushing that glaze on. I know that this is dipping glaze, but I've never had a problem sort of brushing on um, this dipping glaze onto bits where I've missed it. Um, I flipped it over and then did the, the base. Um, I did sign this piece after this step down the bottom because I realized I forgot to sign it because I bis fired it straight away and it was too fragile to flip upside down so I did end up signing this but I went in with um, a Crescentos low sheen glaze so I've never used this glaze before classic me testing something for the first time on a project I've spent hours on um, but I add the low sheen glaze to the top now I put it on um, and then as I was going I was like oh actually how many coats does this need and it needed about two to three coats but on the label it says that pastel colors will change in the firing and I was like oh gosh what have I done because <laughs> I should have read that before but I was like you know what better test it on something that's really practical instead of a test tile so i popped it through the kiln and here is what it looks like the colors did change quite a lot actually <laughs> from what i mix them to and what they usually look like but the low sheenness is quite nice something I did notice with this piece is even though I put lots and lots of pigment I feel like because I brushed that glaze on I sort of moved the under glaze around a little bit and the pigment isn't as strong and as opaque in areas as I wanted it to be um, but that's just something I was under time constraint and couldn't really I guess I didn't really have an alternative for this item um, this week to sort of perfect that um, I also have to say that I have new YouTubers equipment um, and I'm still learning how to use it it's a new camera so I'm just playing around with the features I've got this sort of French vintage effect on this video because I thought macarons it would be so cute to see but the pastels are so delightful so as I said I um, reached out to Mrs Brown Bakes and she delivered some delicious goodies I was so impressed so the colors were absolutely perfect and this plate fits macarons so wonderfully i think it's so gorgeous i i reckon it's the perfect plate for like a little tea party or a high tea or even if um you're told not to bring a thing at someone's house to sort of bake some goodies and pop it on I think that the low sheen glaze has a lot of potential. I think it worked really lovely on this piece and if I best fired that under glaze on first, I think it would have been so wonderful. But yeah, the pastels are just a dream. They are so lovely. Like even the macaron plate looks gorgeous with some pastel colored cupcakes. It could go so well with any desserts. But I want to know what you think of it in the comments. Let me know below and make sure to like and subscribe for part 36.